really showing to me is highlighting how a lot of teachers are really doing lots of student-centred learning if they're using the flipped classroom to help facilitate that. And now we're going to have Margaret Robson, who's um, one of the teachers at FlexEd, and she's going to talk about how she's been using it in advanced and fibre. about the course, but first of all, our participants are all CRT teachers, and you probably already know we have animal husbandry, horticulture, IT, management, hairdressing, maths. trades, maths, maths. <laughs> <laughs> huge range, and some people have been coming here teaching for a long time, other people have come from industry with a huge resource, you know, industry resource, and it's very highly, both those things are highly valued. So when I come to the class, I don't want anybody to be constrained by me, by my knowledge, because there's so much in the group. And when we put the evaluations out every semester, always, you know, the collaborative nature, the way people interact with others and gain perspectives from other disciplines. You might have young learners in hairdressing, you know, a teacher from uh, panel beating will come along and say they've got young learners and they see similar problems, similar issues. and compare strategies and it's a very rich environment so the class time is really valuable for sharing and also not just sharing but sharing e-learning pedagogy and making that link between people's practice and people's pedagogy. So this is what I want to create a big space for and I just thought I would mention the types of um, pedagogy that we cover, this is not everything, but this, these are the things we touch on. And for example, constructivism is quite a, if you haven't met this before, this is quite a complex concept to grasp. Um, Learner-centred teaching, uh, we look at critical thinking and reflection, the higher order of thinking skills. Um, research, research tasks and web quests, anybody familiar with web quests? Um, and even, but even web quests, it takes a while to sort of get your head around it. Uh, and so these are the things that I've tried to get videos on to push out to the pre-class activities. And just to give an example of how I'm using it, I thought I would show one. And I've got a picture here, but I'll actually go to the um, classroom and do it. Video. It's produced by Stanford University and it is a model which asks students to develop questions. Does anybody do that? Get students to develop questions <coughs> in an assessment? Uh, I know some people do it. It's not, it's not a new thing, but the way that Stanford University has done it is very new in that they get people to use their, their students to use their mobile phones 
but it's really the concept that I want people to understand. It doesn't matter about the phones or the technology. And uh, just to really explain this, I'll just put this on for uh, fifth version half. talk to the TED site um, a couple of years ago and some kind person in the world had taken his TED talk and taken a snippet out of it and put it up on YouTube and I found it on YouTube. <laughs> When my 
son was four in England. Actually, he was four everywhere, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> probably being strict about it. Wherever he went, he was four. Yeah, but he was in the Nativity play. Remember the story? No, it's not a true story. Mel Gibson did the sequel, you may have seen it. Nativity 2. But um, James got the part of Joseph, which we were told about. We considered this to be one of the lead parts. Uh, about the place of Hannah's on occasion, some t-shirts, you know, Jane Robinson is Joseph, by the way. He didn't have to speak, but you know the bit where the three kings come in? Uh, they come in bearing gifts, and they bring gold, frankincense, and that. This really happened, we were sitting there, and they, I think, just went out of sequence. Because we talked a bit more afterwards and said, you know, are you okay with that? And said, yeah, well, I was that long. They just switched, didn't they? So, anyway, the three boys came in, little four-year-olds with tea towels in their hands, and they put these boxes down, and the first boy said, I bring you gold. And the second boy said, I bring you men. And the third boy said, Frank said this. I'm not sure if this is going to catch up, but this is the second bit. And I might have to, dare I say it, tell the story myself. You can imagine, get the gist of it, but the, the second story is about a choreographer who actually choreographed cats, and she's a world-class choreographer. But when she was a young child, she had um, uh, was diagnosed with learning disabilities, and she uh, had all these kind of tests, and everybody was pulling out her hair. She was so disrupted and disrupted in class, and nobody could handle this child in school. And eventually, she went to. <laughs> And the third thing about intelligence is, it's distinct. Uh, I'm doing a new book at the moment called Epiphany, which is uh, based on a series of interviews with people about how they discover their talent. I'm fascinated by how people got to be there. Uh, it's really prompted by a conversation I had with a wonderful woman who most people have never heard of. She's called Julian Lin. Have you heard of her? Somehow. She's a choreographer, and everybody knows her work. She did cats and fans in the opera. She's wonderful. I used to be on the board of Royal Ballet in England, as you can see. And, uh, <laughs> Anyway, Julian and I had a lunch on that, and actually a dancer. And she said it was interesting. When she was at school, she was really hopeless. And the school in the 30s wrote to her parents that we think Julian has a learning disorder. We couldn't concentrate, she was pinching. I think now they'd say he had ADHD. Wouldn't you? But this was the 1930s, and ADHD hadn't been invented in the first place, so it wasn't an available condition. You know? <laughs> People might have where they could have that. <laughs> Specialist. So this oak panel room, and, and she was there with, uh, with her mother, and she was led and sat on this uh, chair at the end, and she sat on her hands for 10 minutes while this man talked to her mother about all the problems she was having at school. At the end of it, um, because she was disturbing people like her mother's always there, she was on it, In the end, uh, the, uh, the doctor went and sat in the street and said, Jim, I've listened to all these things that your mother's told me. I need to speak to her privately. So she said, he said, wait here, we'll be back, we'll be right on with it. As they went out of the room, he turned on the radio that was sitting on his desk. And when they got out of the room, he said to her, just stand and watch her. And um, the minute they left the room, she said she was on her feet, moving to the music. And they watched a few minutes, and he turned to her mother, and he said, you know, this is him. Jane isn't sick. She's a dancer. Take her to a dance school. I said, what happened? He said, she did. I can't tell you how wonderful it was. We walked in this room, and it was full of people like me. People who couldn't sit still. People who had to move to think. Who had to move. I'll stop it there. Um, but there's, this, this kind of resonates with um, our trade teachers who, who really give a similar story. That they have students who really like to think on their feet, problem solve. Um, you know, they don't want to sit down and read, but they're very smart people nevertheless. Just back to this. <laughs> finish off, that was my video. Um, also, oh, I didn't show it, but I, after the video there's a drag and drop little flash activity where people can test themselves on what, what they've learned. And um, so, it, it, and it's all really rewards, it's coming into the reward system. And I think that's really important in my course because we have many people coming along as students and they're very good technically and they're comfortable with computers. And then we have people, for example, I had a sewing teacher who had never used a 
computer before. So for some people it's going to be potentially very frustrating. And the more awards I can give and build in, the more harmonious the environment's going to be. Just to finish off, um, some other videos and digital repository. Um, I just came across this video, it's promotional, but it does give a very good overview of what a digital repository is. And WebQuest, the person who created WebQuest, Julia Dodge, has put some videos up to YouTube. So people are hearing the, the essence of WebQuest from the source. Um, and many of these videos I've used are so much better than I feel than anything I could have created myself. Um, just to finish off, the benefits for me, once I've got these up as a resource, I can give the shell of the program to people wanting recognition. It's going to give them more of an idea about the program and we're going to be on the same page. Uh, it's, I feel it's more interesting, it's livened up the course, and most importantly, all time I'm to collaborate.